How's it going, guys? This is California Iwin coming to you from the same place I keep coming to you from, wherever that may be. The NFL draft concluded way earlier today, so we're going to dive into not only what the Chiefs did, but a little bit about what other teams did and, of course, my reactions and, and stuff like that. Before we begin, I just want to say sorry for not posting videos lately. Um, it's finals week, or finals week is starting on Monday, and so this whole this whole week's going to be busy. It's been busy up to then, so I'll try to make it up to you guys over the summer, possibly, maybe. I don't know. So let's start off with the first round. Um, Kansas City, um, I believe, shocked many Chiefs fans when they uh, traded up from 27 to 10 um, to pick up Patrick Mahomes, the quarterback out of Texas Tech. Now, Patrick Mahomes was the fan favorite, and most of us were thinking that he wasn't going to fall to us, not at 27, and many other people believe that when we traded up, it was probably going to be for Deshaun Watson. Of course, in exchange for Patrick Mahomes, we gave up, I believe it was next year's first rounder, and a third rounder this year, which in my opinion was not horrible for this type of trade. So the Chiefs landed their potential quarterback of the future who will sit behind Alex Smith this year and possibly the next to develop. To all my fellow Chiefs fans out there who believe that Alex Smith is out the door because of this, um, not yet he isn't. You gotta understand. Mahomes comes from a system that generally quarterbacks do not succeed on the pro level from the air raid system, which they ran at Texas Tech. Having said that, he also has mechanics that are pretty bad, and you don't want to start him. You don't want to start him immediately. The good news for him is that he landed with Andy Reid, um, who, as we know, is a pretty good quarterback developer and he'll be sitting behind Alex Smith and can get some of his athleticism and that stuff and just learn before he really starts and then in a year possibly two he can take the reins and we'll see where we go from there all in all though I was pretty happy about that pick and I know a large majority of Chiefs fans were also happy with that pick in the second round, Kansas City picked up a uh, defensive end from Villanova, and forgive me if I say this wrong, Tano Passagnon, I believe is how you say that. I, I, I believe that's, that's how you say it, Passagnon, the K is silent. I hope so. Most of the analysts uh, say that he is a developmental pick, and being from an FCS school, in this case Villanova, that may be the case. Um, he's a huge guy, though. He's, I believe they listed him at 6'7", 289 pounds, and um, John Dorsey in the press conference afterwards said that he would probably use him in a Justin Tuck um, manner with the... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, with the uh, uh, a five technique on obvious passing downs. There's a very, uh, there's very limited film on him online that I could find, but the very little that I saw, I was pretty impressed with his size and his speed and being able to uh, get around the edge. That being said, he also seemed to be pretty raw as a prospect, so we'll see where this goes, but... I was okay with that pick. It filled another uh, need. We needed some help on the defensive line and especially help bolstering the run game. Speaking of the run game, in round three, um, pick 86 overall, we traded up for this as well. We picked up running back Kareem Hunt out of Toledo. 
I was also pretty satisfied by this pick. I personally uh, really liked Alvin Kamara, um, but you know he was off way before we we got to round three. But Kareem Hunt will do fine. He's a a physical runner, hard to bring down. He fumbled once in like. 800 carries like over his entire college career, which is pretty darn impressive and something that we need. He's also a very good pass catcher. He's not fast, per se. I believe he ran like a 4... like a 4 six, 40, something like that. But at the same time, he's hard to bring down, and he does show elusiveness despite not being fast. So I did like this pick, especially with the running game struggling so much after Jamal Charles went down. We went out and signed uh, C.J. Spiller in the offseason, and you know he's getting older too, so I don't know what to expect from him. Spencer Ware never really seemed to recover fully after he suffered that concussion. Um, he, just, he just didn't seem like the same player. And then there's Charkandra West, who really was a non-factor all year, so I'm wondering if if his job is safe anymore with this selection. We'll find out come training camp. But all in all, I also liked the Kareem Hunt pick. I hope he does well, and he's one of the very few players that we drafted that I think can be an immediate contributor. We'll just wait and see. Round four, we pick up wide receiver J.U. Chesson out of Michigan. Again, sorry if I butchered the name. From what I was told, he was the top receiver at Michigan um, before uh, Amara Darbo had his breakout year, and Darbo was actually selected just a few picks before. Chesson had kind of an off year last year with the emergence of Darbo, but the year before, 2015, was a breakout year. I believe he had like over 700, uh, over 700 yards on 50 reception, 50 plus receptions, and nine touchdowns, if I remember correctly, which is pretty, pretty decent numbers for a single season. Those numbers actually reminded me a little bit of uh, Chris Conley coming out of uh, college uh, a couple of years ago. Um, we're already pretty good at the receiver position, although many people are wondering now with this selection if D'Anthony Thomas or Albert Wilson will be on the chopping block come training camp again. We don't know yet. We'll find this out in August. So then after that we have uh, in round five Linebacker from Georgia Southern, oh gosh, uh, Ukeme Aligwe, I think, is how you say it, maybe, uh, again, we have yet another, uh, small school prospect. Now, this was a guy who started his collegiate career at Florida State, but was dismissed for some reason. I, I fail to remember at this point, uh, the reason behind it, but, ended up transferring to uh, Georgia Southern and really breaking out there and um, from what I could tell um, from his uh, from again limited tape um, with him as well um, he's he's very fast um, he's he go he drops into coverage similar to a Derek Johnson um, and with him coming in he'll be able to learn behind Derek Johnson um, and, uh, hopefully pick up some, some good stuff from him. So, with that being said, that was a pick that I have to say I was not feeling bad about. Finally, round six, with the 218th pick overall, we pick up, uh, Leon McCoy the third, the safety out of... USC. Couldn't really find a whole lot on him either. Um, being the sixth rounder, you know, there wasn't uh, not not a whole lot I could find. And 
Kansas City's pretty set at safety right now with Eric Berry being re-signed to the six-year deal. Um, we've still got uh, Ron Parker playing at a pretty good level. And uh, when Daniel Sorensen comes in, he also plays very well. So we'll see um, where Leon McCoy will, will fit in there, maybe as a special teamer. Does he play special teams? Maybe. But there you have it. Kansas City going into this draft had 10 draft picks. And from all the wheeling and dealing that we did, um, we, uh, we came away with 6 picks. And overall, I'd give this draft um, about a B. Um, I, we hit all of, all of the hits, well, with uh, all of the draft picks, with the exception of maybe wide receiver and safety, were all team needs, quarterback. Uh, defensive line, linebacker, and running back. They were all uh, areas where we needed a little bit of help. Um, but overall, I was I was pretty satisfied with this draft. I saw some Chiefs fans saying, uh, very few, mind you, but uh, a few that were saying some along the lines of this being one of the worst drafts that they've ever seen. And for me... You know, the, the, the reasoning behind them not liking the, uh, this draft is the fact that, you know, none of these players are, are day one starters. My response to that is none of them needed to be. The team only lost a few players in free agency, not very many, and the team is still in a good position to win quite a few games. I know what you're thinking. We've got the second hardest schedule in the NFL, you know, opening Thursday night against the Patriots, which I'm also, I'm excited yet uneasy about, but hey, first game of the year against the defending Super Bowl champions, I'll take it. Am I saying we'll win? <laughs> but what I am saying is that the team, you know, despite the the the, uh, the needs the needs were not glaring. They weren't something that would completely break the team if we didn't fix and fix now. Whereas other teams were banking on making a pick that would not derail uh, their whole season, kind of like the Bears, which we'll talk about in a minute. So for those of you who are upset at this uh, Kansas City draft, first of all, we shouldn't judge a player before he gets on the field. I mean, that's just, that's called jumping to conclusions. I'm pretty sure we did that with Tyreek Hill. And, and what did Tyreek Hill do again? Oh yeah, um, 12 touchdowns his rookie campaign. So, you tell me. With that being said, let's talk a little bit about what happened uh, the rest of the draft. First of all, let's let's talk about the obvious elephant in the room, the, uh, the Chicago Bears, um, who I believe proved that this year they may actually be dumber than the Cleveland Browns. I mean, okay, you know what? I fail to understand why they would trade three picks to move up one spot, one spot in the draft. Three picks. It was like a, a third rounder and a fourth rounder this year and then a third rounder next year to move up one spot. The 49ers should be accused of highway robbery or the Bears should just be accused of being that stupid and the 49ers not being stupid by taking that and running. And then they go, and with that second pick, they draft Mitchell Trubisky, who is definitely not a day one starter. Nothing against Trubisky, but, you know, the Bears, they signed Mike Glennon to, like, what, a $45 million deal in the offseason? What are they doing? And I know for a fact that many Bears fans were upset with that pick, and honestly, they didn't pick very well the whole draft. There is also a report that Coach John Fox didn't even know that they were drafting Trubisky until 
until they actually did it. I don't know if that's true or not. I just read it. It could be fake news for all I know. But if that's true, someone needs to go. Or they need to bring back the sugar bears, or one of the two. Meanwhile, the Cincinnati Bengals have uh, surpassed the Oakland Raiders um, as the all-prison team. In the second round, they drafted Joe Mixon, which, don't get me wrong, Joe Mixon is, in my opinion, one of the best running backs in this draft. That being said, everyone knows about the video of him laying out uh, uh, that woman in the coffee shop. Granted, I do personally, I believe he was provoked by the woman, though obviously he reacted way too strongly. He apologized for it, and I guess we'll, we'll see where that goes. But think about this. They have Mixon, they have Pac-Man Jones, and they have Vontae's perfect. Let that, let that sink in for a little bit. Yeah, so uh, we'll, uh, we'll, 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 we'll see where that goes. The Browns seemingly had a good draft. They were able to get three picks in the first round, and they used them on Miles Garrett, Jabril Peppers, and David Njoku, um, which is seemingly good, but then again, knowing the Browns, they'll probably still go 4-12. I would love to see them do better than 4-12, trust me. I mean... I would love to see the Browns actually play competent football once. Uh, I don't know. I'm pretty sure Texans fans really hate uh, really hate the Chiefs now because uh, of Kansas City jumping up uh, to grab Patrick Mahomes, and it was evident that they probably wanted Mahomes, given the fact that two picks later Houston jumped up and drafted Deshaun Watson, who was probably second on their draft board. So let's talk about um, how the draft took place in Philadelphia, and um, am I the only one who got really irritated with the fact that every single time the Eagles came up to, uh, to pick, they played Fly Eagles Fly? Look, I get it. You're in Philadelphia and you want to appeal to the fans. I get it. And if the draft won Kansas City, they'd probably do the tomahawk, you know, every time they came up. And I wouldn't be complaining because, you know, it's a fan thing. I mean, I don't know. I probably don't have a right to say anything about it, but, you know. Me, personally, I thought that was a little annoying, but I'm not an Eagles fan, so I... I don't know. Also, I have to give credit to uh, Mr. Drew Pearson, um, who single-handedly caused the entire city of Philadelphia to uh, riot. I think that was pretty awesome. That being said, I believe it was Brian Dawkins and Brian Westbrook at the start of today who came in and were just... <laughs> They just bashed on him too, and it was it was wonderful. Classic classic Cowboys Eagles rivalry. Mm, it was it was it was fun to watch. I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. It was fun. Real quick, um, before I wrap things up, uh, the Iowa players that went. We had um, Desmond King uh, go to the Chargers. Um, you know. Drake tight end Eric Salvera going to the Falcons. Uh, U and I defensive end Carter Schultz uh, is an undrafted free agent who's going to Cleveland. So I'm really happy for for all of them. And then there's uh, Jaleel Johnson, um, who I believe is going to the Vikings. And then there was George Kittle, and I'm trying to remember where he went. Sorry, George, I forgot about you. So, yeah, that's it. Draft 2017. Woo! It's done. No more mock drafts. Well, <laughs> uh, well, there are mock drafts, but I won't pay attention to any of them until February, maybe. Or September. But that's all I got. 
Bria from uh, Iowa, which is really cold and really rainy and really dreary. Not fun. But I suppose that's the price you pay for living in the American Midwest all the time, so... At least it's not snow like they saw in Denver. But that's all I got for you today, so make sure to subscribe, uh, leave your comments, uh, making fun of my team. Uh, feel free to do that. Um, you know, feel free to leave your comment, what you thought was a great moment in the draft. Um, feel free to, uh, you know, just say whatever you want because, you know, I'm a college kid. I don't know what I'm talking about. So, yeah, like, subscribe, comment, do, do, you know, whatever you do when you watch YouTube videos. I don't know. And, uh, I'll try to post videos more. Keyword in that is try. And I'm gonna try to survive all my finals, so, uh... Alright, I'm out, guys, so, p peace, 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 don't fly United.